Well, hello. My name's Penny, and um, I live in the southeast of England. This is what people say. I watch their podcasts. I live in the southeast of England with my husband. My two daughters are grown, married, have children of their own, and now one is a grandma, and um, the other one will be in January. So I'm a great grandma, and my mum is still going strong, uh, very, very with it. So she's GG. So that's to tell you a little bit about me in a nutshell. I wanted to say hello YouTube friends because the first person I ever watched on YouTube was Kate of Last Homely House and uh, she's got the lime green sofa and and hello YouTube friends and as soon as her cat hears her say that up it comes and uh, there's something about it isn't there so I'm not going to say hello YouTube friends but that's what I want to say I've been wanting to do this for a long long time um, since the beginning of lockdown really which was last March last March the 16th was when I um, started sheltering um, yeah I was at work at that time I worked one day a week and I retired at, in the last week of March and so I didn't have long to go really I did my last few uh, sessions by phone because I was a counsellor for the NHS. So what's my podcast going to be about? Why do I want to do it? I think today the reason I want to do it is because it's all going to be changing again. You know, they're saying shall we wear masks, shall we not wear masks, um, shall we distance, shall... Oh, and the numbers are going up and I just thought, am I back to square one, really? I don't know what you think, but um, I just wanted to have a chat. And so that's what my podcast's going to be. I plan on doing it once a fortnight, putting it up at the same time, probably putting it up on a Monday and, yeah, putting one up. I'm going to try and keep it to about 20 minutes because I think, for me, if you, you've got 20 minutes after dinner or whenever and you can just sit and listen and you know it's not going to be well I don't know how let's see how it develops I'm in my little corner uh, in my other house I had a beautiful craft room but 20 years ago after the children had got married and we were on our own uh, we bought a bungalow and I haven't got a craft room now but I do crafts I do sewing I don't do crochet, my, uh, my wrists won't let me, but I do knitting and sewing and embroidery and counter cross stitch. So yeah, quite eclectic mix, um, but I, I just do it where, wherever I am. However, I have got a table here in this little corner and um, this is where I, my, my, this is where I can operate. <laughs> this is my little section. So that's where I thought I'd do my vlogs. So what did I want to talk about? Well, I thought I'd talk about what I've done in the past, craft-wise, what I'm doing now, not in any great detail. You know, some people put all the notes underneath and, you know, tell you exactly the, the type of wall. And I'm just going to show you what I'm doing, really. Um, that's made me think, shall I get one of my quilts to show you? Yes, I'll, I'll do that. I'll get that in a minute. So I thought I'd show you something that I did in the past, something that I'm doing now. Um, and it's called, I, I thought, what shall I call it? I noticed most people have got a title for their vlogs and I thought I'd call mine, shall I, shan't I? Because that's what I say. <laughs> Oh, shall I? Oh, I don't know. Oh, and then I asked Pete. He says, what? And he's so good at listening. What? I say, well, 
shall I or shan't I? Well, and he listens to all the shall I's and then he listens to all the shan't I's. I haven't got a special camera. I said people have got tripods and cameras. I haven't got any of that. I'm just sitting here with a little ordinary microphone, so I'm hoping it'll up upload okay. I'm not too sure, but we'll see. So also being an, a counsellor for the NHS uh, for 20 odd years, I thought that I might be able to help a little bit with anxiety or any little tips or I yeah, any little things that have helped me. Any ways round obstacles. So I might do a little portion about that. And then I wanted to do a little bit of portion about my life. Just a little story really. Yeah, you know how Ronnie Corbett used to do it? Just sit at the end and uh, have a little chat. So that's what I thought I'd do. So if you want to listen, please do. If it's not for you, no worries, as they say now. Um, I noticed the sun's coming out and it's beautiful. It's been quite overcast today. It's the, I don't know the date, so don't ask me. It's Sunday afternoon anyway. And it's been quite overcast and muggy. But muggy for me is cold because I feel the cold very much. And so, yeah. If I look out of this window here, I see the sea. And uh, it's lovely. We've got a lovely garden, which is why we bought the bungalow. We didn't want a place too big, but we wanted space round us. And in the southeast, that's not very easy to find. So we've got a nice garden. I've got chickens and I thought I'd do a little film because last July, after lockdown lifted a bit, I went to, shall I, shan't I? Oh, but I decided yes. And I went to the camera shop in Canterbury and bought myself a camera. Here it is. And I take photographs and little movies because Pete and I are both birders. We love our birds and we uh, go to the Isles of Scilly when it's not, you know, pandemic time. And we love it. We love, we love islands. We love um, places where there's not too many people. But definitely we love places that are surrounded by the sea. So... I'll just maybe put a little bit of film up each time I do a vlog. Not too long. Don't want to bore you. So I'd better get on with it, hadn't I? Otherwise I'll run out of time on the first one. So I wanted to show you the first thing I made. And next time I'll tell you about the first thing I didn't made. I didn't make. And that was a dress for my dressmaking at school. And I'll tell you a little bit about my school. That's what I plan on doing. It went hideously wrong. And uh, that'll be the story. I'll jot it down. That'll be the story I'll start with next time. But this is my first counter cross stitch. I thought, how in heaven's name? Oh, I mean, when did I do this? 1973. You couldn't Google things then. You couldn't look on YouTube to find out things, how they're, how they're, you know, doing now, how to do them. You couldn't do it. You had to work it out yourself. And when I looked at the instructions, I thought, how do I get that onto there? But I fathomed it. And the reason I was doing it was because I'd had my second baby and uh, she slept two hours out 24. And she was very, very hyperactive. Fortunately, she completely calmed down by the time she was two and uh, has led a normal life since. But for those first two years, and then she got mumps, I got mumps, and then I got glandular fever. And so, well, I had a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and that's how I felt, like death warmed up, really. So I started to do this counter cross stitch, and this is it. It's a linnet. I hope there's not too much reflection, but I think you can see it. So that's the first thing I ever did. 
and I was pleased with it and it spurred me on to do more. It's an Eva Rosen stand and it, it's very, very fine if you see the linen and the, it's, it's, I loved it. I like anything that's fine. I'm not too big a clonky person. Well, I'm only five foot one and, you know, clonk doesn't suit me. So that's what I did in 1973. The first thing I did really, and this is what I'm doing now. I wanted to do, oh, I've forgotten what it's called now. Hang on, I'll get it up. Um, it's called the Silver River Shawl and it's by Helen Stewart. And I've just finished a scarf of Helen Stewart's and it turned out to be so beautiful that my daughter wanted one and my friend wanted one. So I landed up knitting three. I'll show you that next time, shall I? I better make notes. Here I go. So short scarf. And what was the other thing? School. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't know where I'd be going with this, but I've already got my second vlog. Now this yarn is the most divine yarn I've ever, ever had, ever. It's, I bought it from Yarn Works and I bought one just as a treat. Oh, shall I, shan't I? I've got a stash, but I couldn't resist it. It's an Irish artisan yarn and it's hand dyed and I only got into knowing about hand dyed yarn after lockdown because I started watching YouTube and seeing what other people were doing and going on to the different sites and you can see now I've got a little collection that's what I made the um, the scarf with and anyway this is the ball I bought. Now it doesn't show up the colours. It's the most exquisite colours. But of course then I realised I wanted to do this pattern. I'll put the pattern up here. And it's got a lighter one with it. So I phoned Yarnworks and I said, oh, I don't know what one to buy. What do you think? He said, have you got WhatsApp? I said, I have. He said, well, if you give me your number, I'll send you a couple of the light ones through so that'll help you, you know, choose. I said, well, thank you very much. This is like holding. I can't explain it. It's Baby Suri Alpaca at 70% and 30% silk. Well, I've had that wall before, but this is like no other. And I bought that. So I've got those two. Now, I thought it was going to be for a river because that's the impression it gets for the, for the you know, well, with the name of the shawl. But no, it's crescent shaped, the shawl. And it was inspired by looking at the Milky Way in the sky and seeing the darkness of the sky and the stars. So Helen Stewart, I'm in the middle of a row. This will be typical me. Just get it. Um, and... She does short rows. So started with the light and, oh, can you see? Quite hard, isn't it? This is, she calls a star stitch. If I, if I do it like that. That shows you, doesn't it? Oh, it's so beautiful though. How can I show you? Well, maybe there. It's got green and blue and silver. And so that's the stars, the Milky Way, and this is the sky. And as you can see, you do short rows to create this sh crescent shape. So that's my latest project. So I was gonna tell you a little bit about my life. Well, I was born in London and I lived in Islington. And when I was three, my mum and dad, I was born in 1949. And um, so, you know, rationing actually stopped uh, at the beginning of 1949. And I was born in August. And well, it was after the war. And the only places my mum 
and dad found to live at first they shared a single bed and they had um, a thing put over the bath to make a table and it was all pretty you know desperate and then they gradually got another one with a proper bed size you know not a bed sitting room but a bedroom as well and then they were told would they like a flat in Harlow Harlow Newtown actually it was Harlow Old Town and you know Harlow Newtown but now it's the old you can imagine it's part yeah it's it's not new anymore actually it's in the listed part of Harlow and um, they had this most wonderful light windows beautiful flat but it meant moving from Islington to Harlow which was quite a trek in those days it was a trek and my dad had to drive to London to work and back which meant he didn't see much of us and um, yeah but it was beautiful for mum and it was lovely for me so yes and I went to a little private school although they had no money at all they saved every single penny they could and they sent me to this gorgeous little private school with not many children very progressive I've read up all about it and um, Fesden it was called and it was a treat and mum used to take me on the school bus and I was three and a half and they said look she cries when you leave her why don't you just pop her on the bus and uh, we'll make sure she's all right so at three and a half that's what mum did when you think about that now no mother would ever do that but it it wasn't wrong it was fine and the the people look on the bus looked after me and um, I had a little a little bed I remember in the afternoon we used to get on our beds and have a little nap and I thoroughly enjoyed it however when we were five my dad was then offered a flat in Tottenham with his work and so he decided to take that because that would be so much better for him not having that long journey so we up stixed and we went to Tottenham and I went to school there the little school was opposite my flat and I'll tell you a bit more about that next time so I'm realising that 20 minutes goes by so quickly but maybe next time I won't have to introduce myself because it is episode one isn't it and I mean I couldn't just plop myself on you um, I mean who's she what's she doing so as I say it's going to be a little bit about crafting now I mean oh I haven't shown you any of my quilts I'll write quilt on my list I'll show you my quilts next time because 20 odd years ago I was shown how to make quilts and I've shown many people since my friends make them my daughter now started quilting I've shown her on zoom in lockdown and uh, yeah it's um it's something that I enjoy so yeah I might I'll show you see what you think so I love you and leave you and I'll see you in a fortnight for episode two. Thanks for joining me and take care. Bye.